How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another episode here of the Calamity Let's Play. Now, today, my friends, we're starting off with the traveling merchant because this guy, this time, has got a real humdinger of a melee upgrade. Check this out, my friends. The katana is available for purchase for 10 gold, coming in at a whopping... 49% crit chance and 25 melee damage. And yeah, that's a rather significant amount of stat upgrade, isn't it? So uh, I think there's only one thing to do at this point, and that is to go ahead and purchase this thing. I mean, come on. 16 additional damage, 45% additional crit chance. It's a no-brainer. It really is. Check it out as well, my friends. We've got ourselves the Pylon Activator from the Extra Pylons mod. And additionally, the Crimson Cloak. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a great deal of money. But I may be able to scrape up enough to get both of these things. Ideally, I'd like both. A, so I could check out the Pylon Activator, see what it does. And B, because it's a cloak. I love cloaks in Terraria. I think they're fantastic. Alrighty. Goldor, Amethyst... Topaz, Sapphire. Do we have enough for both? There's only one way to find out. Ah, we're like 80 silver coins away. No, 30 silver coins away, roughly. Realistically, what are we going to be using tin for? Pretty much nothing. So, let's get this cloak and let's put it on. And oh man, oh man, do I look so much more amazing. <laughs> Whoa! Okay, so I just went ahead and uh, did the tree treasures thing with the lumberjack here. We've got grapefruits, birds. That's interesting, I guess. And I guess wood. I don't know. I didn't really pay attention to the tooltip thing there. But uh, yeah, I'd rather enjoy this. Minor improvements to stats. Alrighty, guys. So check it out. I've been a little bit busy in this pyramid base here. We now have our bed here. So we now have a spawn point, which is brilliant because it means we can now easily get between all of our base areas. We can simply teleport our way back here with the magic mirror. But there's a couple of other things that I do want to go ahead and do. Maybe we chop down a storage chest or two just over here, rather like so. Because now, my friends, I could go ahead and put fish in here and be able to make little fish stew, fish food items for even more stat boosts. Oh, and uh, yeah, you may have noticed this painting. I actually got that completely randomly from this guy here. You do the divination and uh, sometimes it gives you a mystery painting. And this is the painting that we got. And apparently it's called Ohayu. So there you go. Needless to say, there's probably some reference there to something that I'm not really entirely sure of. I'll be honest with you. I've never really been too brushed up on the whole references side of things. So I apologize for that. But uh, it's a cool looking painting. It kind of looks like a kitty cat with the little pointed ears here. <laughs> so check it out, my friends. What you're going to do the comment of the day at the beginning of today's episode. A Bendy Man says this. There is not currently Master Mode drops for the Calamity bosses. So maybe for the time being, you could put the boss's mask in until they add them if they do. I thought that was a fantastic idea. I really, really do. Because, yeah, this item frame here would wind up being empty otherwise. Because, obviously, we've got the Master Mode drop right here for the vanilla bosses. But then we'd have nothing for this guy here, the Desert Scourge. Which, as you can see, now has a brown base. So, yeah, putting the mask in there. That's a great idea. That really, really is. So, I'll tell you what. Let's head on over here and let's grab out the Desert Scourge mask. Because we actually have one. So yeah, thank you so much for that idea. I very much do appreciate it. It means that we can continue to populate all of the item frames and various bits and bobs inside of our boss display area of epicness. So before continuing on with this episode, my friends, and all of the things that I want to get done, I do want to say a huge thank you for all of your wonderful support throughout the series, my friends. I very much do appreciate it. Now, of course, if you do want to continue showing your support for the series, the best and easiest way to do so is simply to head down below the video and drop a like. But I tell you what, if you do want to go one further and be an absolute MVP, use code Python when ordering any sneak energy drinks or to get 5% off any of my Apex gaming PCs. So since the last cut, my friends, I've actually gone ahead and installed another mod and also a resource pack. A huge thank you to all of you guys who were suggesting that I go ahead and do this because guys, check it out. We now have 
colored relics. So not only do we have colored vanilla relics, but also colored calamity relics. And I'll tell you what. They look fantastic. I'm sure you guys would agree. So, yeah, I really, really am looking forward to populating this place with more relics now just to see the variety of colors we have to come. It's going to be amazing. So then, one of the things we're going to do in today's episode is grind out the Desert Scourge a few times so we can get all of the fishing-related accessories we need for one of the fishing ultimate accessories. You know, that ultimate tackle box bait station thingy. I can't remember what it was bleeding called. But basically, it's like the ultimate fishing accessory and the only thing you'll ever need for your fishing journey throughout Calamity. So yeah, we've got ice blocks, which I'm going to convert into ice torches here, which I'm then going to convert a whole bunch of arrows into a frost burn arrows. And then yeah, we'll get right on with this thing, okay? A pioneeria? What the heck is that? Well, I mean, I could buy it right now, but it doesn't mean that I know what it is. Um, sure. <laughs> Anyways, let's go ahead and make ourselves some uh, Frostburn arrows, of which we have um, many. And then, uh, yeah, I do kind of want to check out this thing. Like, what is it? Is it a book that you can... Whoa, that's cool! It's literally a book that contains every single pylon and their requirements. This is great! Void Projector? We've got the pylon activator. Ah, here we go. Place it near any pylon, and that pylon will no longer require any NPCs to be near it. Nice. That's actually really quite cool, actually. Yeah. Dungeon pylon, living mahogany pylon. This is brilliant. Oh, man, more mods should have this. Just a book that tells you what's what in the mod. That is fantastic. When you realize that you can actually literally buy and make infinite snowballs for ammo for your snowball cannon launcher thingy. <laughs> oh, this is great. I love modded Terraria. It's just brilliant, isn't it? And now that we have a baronade, this should be way easier. Come on in, fella. Let's see what you can do. Oh, there he is. Hey. Come on, fella. You're going to die. Ah! Sure. Okay. Next. Really? I had no issues with taking this guy out in the last episode. What the hell is wrong with me? Ah, hell! How am I struggling so much? All right, you know what? Sod it. We're no longer going for the Desert Scourge goal. We are going to go for 200 mana next, my friendos. We currently have 100, and I'm pretty sure part of that is actually via an accessory. Yeah, take that off. We're going down to 80. Right, so we need 120 more mana, which shouldn't be too difficult to get, my friend. So then, 120 mana, that means going ahead and getting ourselves six mana crystals, which is six times five, which is, what, 30. So we need 16 more fallen stars, and then we'll have this goal in the bag. And then if I felt like I wanted to change to a mage loadout, I'd feel a lot better for doing so for having the higher amount of mana. So, yeah, at this point, we're halfway there. Oh, oh, just over halfway there now. Yeah. And what do you know, my friends? Just like that, we are up to over 30 stars here. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Adding them all onto our total here. There we have it. 200 mana. Beautiful. And of course, we put this thing back on. We go back up to 220 mana. So yeah, our health and mana is up to scratch. And I'm feeling pretty good about that. Oh yeah, you may notice I have a witch costume on now. Um, that was another random thing I got from the divination from that oracle guy. <laughs> Ah, the randomness of the stuff that you get in this mod pack. I love it. I think it's brilliant. I really, really do. So we're continuing to pick up fallen stars because let's be honest, I think that the Jester's arrows were the things that were carrying us to victory before. So why would I not use them? Honestly, why would I not use Jester's arrows? They're just brilliant. They're probably the best pre-hard mode arrows you can get. Well, there goes the night time. And would you look at that? A further 50. 51 fallen stars. Now, in this mod, we apparently get 50 Jester's arrows 
per star. Okay, so that's going to be 50 times 51, which I do believe is going to be, what, 2,550. That's a lot of Jester's arrows, guys. Oh, yeah. 3,500? That's pretty decent, if you ask me. All right, there we are. Oh, wow, I was actually bang on. 2,550. <laughs> My A-grade maths. It's not gone anywhere. I'm 27, but I can still do this stuff. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'm just trying to find things to, to feel good about myself about because um, to fail the Desert Scourge three times after you successfully defeated him in the episode prior. It's pretty embarrassing. I'm determined to be able to do this Desert Scourge fight without buffs, all right? So, do you know what? Yeah, that's what we're gonna do, all right? So, here we go, just as always, coming in clutch. You'll love to see it. Look at the damage we're doing. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, come on! How can I not do it even with the Jester's arrows? How much do I suck at this? You know what? Screw these ranger weapons, man. I'm going for the musket with musket balls. Yes. Yes. And then we're going to go for the Eye of Cthulhu. And when we defeat the Eye of Cthulhu, we should be able to start getting some of the alchemist NPC dudes start spawning in amongst other NPCs that are probably going to be very, very useful for our run here. So, yeah. Screw these ranger weapons and screw this desert scourge. We're going to go for an upgrade. Okie dokie. Oh, it's the Undertaker. Wait, can't I, like, transmutate that into a musket? Uh, oh, I can. There it is. Yeah, that's more like it. <laughs> and also, checking out my friends, the arms dealer has actually arrived, which is very, very handy dandy, so we can get ourselves a bunch more ammo. Be it unholy arrows, be it musket balls, all of which are going to be useful in some way or another. Oh, wait, I didn't just... Oh, thank God. I thought I accidentally did a little bit too much there. And I was about to accidentally bring him the Eater of Worlds. Um, yeah, that wouldn't be all that useful to our cause right now, if I'm honest. Ah, so the Vile Thorn, which is something that I was really wanted to try and get. We can transmutate a Crimson Rod into that. The thing is, I think the Crimson Rod could potentially be better than the Vile Thorn. I don't know, man. I think you're on level peggings, if I'm being honest with you. Oh, man. I thought I might... Oh, wait. I might be able to cheese this a little bit, actually. If I was to keep cycling between transmutating the musket into the Undertaker and vice versa, it's like free reforges, isn't it? Rapid. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is so dumb, man. I wonder if I could use that to get Unreal on both. I mean, that would be pretty amazing, right? <laughs> Unreal musket just from crafting it back and forth between this and The Undertaker. Oh, this has got to be nerfed at some point. I've just got to make sure I don't accidentally craft this back into The Undertaker, because if I do that, then that's going to be rather sucky, if I'm honest. Uh, demonic? That's kind of cool, but I mean, Unreal would be what we're looking for. <laughs> If we could have one of each gun be unreal, I think that'd be absolutely wonderful. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, definitely there was some cheese to this, huh? <laughs> hey, man, it's in the game and I discovered an exploit. Who cares, man? All right, the other good news is check this out, my friends. If I was to pop on over here, I do believe we've now actually got two out of three of the bits of armor for the Ancient Shadow set. Yeah, we do. We just need the uh, chest plate. And then we've actually got a full set of shadow armor, would you believe? Pre-Eater of Worlds. I mean, that would certainly be a first for me. <laughs> oh, do we really want to push RNG though? We've had a pretty bad start to the episode with the Desert Scourge. Do we want to push RNG to see if we can get ourselves the Ancient Shadow chest plate? Hey, I mean, that would be a hell of an upgrade to our armor. Seriously, it would be. So check it out, my friends. We can actually upgrade our musket balls from seven range damage up to eight. I mean, it's only a one damage increase, but it's going to be better. So we're going to make them silver bullets. Yeah, very, very nice as well. 1,400 of them, would you believe? 
<laughs> oh, things are looking great, my friends. Things are looking good. So, yeah, I'm actually going to do it. I'm actually going to try and push RNG. If we can get ourselves a chest plate, I'm going to be the happiest guy in the entire world, all right? It just involves us going down to the corruption and just sort of hanging around there until things happen, I guess. Uh, in order to really get this thing going, though, we're going to need ourselves Deathweed. And if I'm honest, I can't actually remember what the other material I need for a battle potion is. I guess maybe we should have a bit of a look doodle here. Uh, oh, rotten chunks. I've got loads of them. The best thing about this mod pack here, my friends, is the fact that it does make the Unreal Undertaker and Unreal Musket full auto. I do not have to keep clicking to use this gun. So, yeah, very, very good. I definitely feel like, as I've mentioned numerous times in my vanilla Let's Play series, they need to do that in vanilla. They need to add some sort of mechanic, be it an accessory or something like that, which will allow us to fully automatically use the guns and the bows and such like that that exist in the game because then we won't wind up with RSI repetitive strain injury okay ho <laughs> ho the tentacle spike ladies and gentlemen 19 melee damage and never grab the pointy end as far as I can remember this thing like puts spikes in dudes which do lasting damage yeah it does look at that 6 damage over time that's pretty cool if you ask me yeah. Oh, hey there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, y'all are getting spiked now. <laughs> the musket is just unstoppable. It really is. I love it. I absolutely love it. Honestly, though, I think that's one of the only things that stops me using it in vanilla Terraria. The fact that it isn't fully auto. You can't just hold down the click and use it. I mean, obviously, keep the slow speed, for goodness sake. Like, keep all of the stats identical. Just allow us to hold down the click to use all the weapons. A goblin army is approaching, is it? Do I have the ability to cancel events? Uh, oh no. Uh-oh. Uh, guys. I don't believe I have the ability to cancel events. Uh-oh. <laughs> no, I don't want to do this. Oh, no. Really? No way. We just got ourselves a duplicate ancient shadow helmet. I wonder what the actual numerical chances are of getting the ancient shadow chest plate. I'm so sad. <laughs> I'm absolutely gutted, man. You are kidding me! A third one! <laughs> I wish I could have the industrial grinder from Ark Survival Evolved so I could grind these down into their raw resources and just make the shadow chest plate. I can't believe it! What is with this luck? <laughs> yes! <laughs> that actually didn't even take that long! Not even a minute after I got that third shadow helmet. Oh! Yes! Yes, 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 and yes, and yes, and yes, and yes again! Hell yeah, dude! Oh, I'm so chuffed a bit! Literally, pre-Eye of Cthulhu, we have gotten ourselves, ladies and gentlemen, full shadow armor! That is unfounded! I've never, ever achieved that in any of my previous Terraria series, period. It's never happened. Oh, one, two, three. There we have it. Increased movement speed and acceleration. We have increased flat damage as opposed to just melee and increased jump speed, interestingly. Ah, oh, this is sick. <laughs> I'm so chuffed. I really am. All right. Well, I guess for the rest of the episode, ladies and gents, we're going to be going ahead and taking on and taking down the Goblin Army. So back over to our desert base we go. We want to get out of here absolutely as soon as possible because these guys are doing a crazy amount of damage. I can't get out of here. I'm trapped in my own base. I don't know for... Ah! Oh! <laughs> oh! 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 Death Mode Goblin Army. They're a bit spicy, aren't they, guys? Oh, do you know what, guys? Let's take off the battle effect. 
Maybe that'll calm things down just a little wee tiny bit, huh? We'll see. We'll see. Uh, so far, not really so good, if I'm being honest with you. We're just getting absolutely machine bowed out of the air. Uh, the quicker we can take down the archers, the better things are going to be. Oh, no. We're going to have a big old problem in a second, guys. Ammo. <laughs> we haven't got any. Oh, no. We're out, ladies and gents. We're out. That's not good now, is it? Uh, I guess we're going to have to do this the old-fashioned way. We're going to have to get up close and personal, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, jeez. This isn't going very well. Oh, no. I don't know where the freaking arms dealer is. In fact, no. I think he's back at the uh, central base. Maybe I could be very, very quick here. Oh, sweet lord. All right. I'm going to have to be quick about this. Ah, uh, Grab. Grab all the things. There we are. All right, we're good. We're good now, guys. I tell you what, this event, Pre-Eye of Cthulhu, is unbelievably annoying and difficult. Mostly in terms of how long it lasts. Look at that. We're only halfway through. I feel like I've been doing this for like 17 ice ages, man. Jeez. We better get some goodies from this, man. I mean, obviously, we're going to get ourselves the Goblin Tinkerer. That is very, very handy dandy, especially super early on here. But, uh, yeah, I I'm talking more so in terms of getting a harpoon. That would be rather lovely, I must say. So with the Undertaker, we're averaging about 70 to 90 damage per second. Okay, let's give it a bit of a go against the musket here, which seems to be hitting triple digits sometimes. Which, at this early stage in the game, that's actually kind of decent, all right? <laughs> oh, my word. This has been an incredibly long event, and I'd quite like for it to be over now. But, uh, yeah, there you have it. The... A death. That's 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 where we have it. There we have it. A death. Yes, yes. That, that's great. And now I'm probably going to be trapped in my own base again. Oh, jeez. Nope. Nope. Not getting trapped. Yeah! The Goblin Army has been defeated. These guys are trying to walk away with their tail in between their legs. But I'll tell you what. No, 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 no. I'm going to drive the advantage home here, my friends. Get out of my world! This is my world. My bases. My blood, sweat, and tears went into this world so far. And you guys do not have a place here. Sayonara! <laughs> oh, hey guys, check it out. 35 gold coins. Do you know what that means? Hmm? Do you know what that means? If we are able to get the arms dealer in one of these alternate houses here, there might just be a chance that I'll be able to go ahead and get some cool stuff going on. All right, uh, we need to go ahead and put a door down here. Apparently, the goblins have just, like, broken my bases. Uh, there we have it. Right. Now, if we were to sort of go over here, maybe we get the arms dealer to spawn back in that house. Maybe he's happy enough to sell me the uh, mini shark at normal price. There we have it. Pretty cool, isn't it? Pretty damn cool. <laughs> oh, snappers. Only four range damage, mind. But, uh, yeah. We can shoot super fast now. Yeah! The Abomination has just arrived, ladies and gents. And I'm pretty sure that is indeed the guy who allows you to cancel events. So maybe you need only have taken down your first event in your world to have him spawn in. Uh, I'm assuming it's the Abomination that allows you to skip events anyway. We'll find that out in just a hot second here. But for now, I'm just trying to go ahead and uh, organize my inventories a little bit. Eventually, of course, we will make ourselves a proper storage room. Don't worry about that. Uh, but yeah, for now, I'm just trying to organize things just a little bit better. Yep, there he is, my friends. And there it is. The ability to cancel events. Fantastic. So check this out, my friends. We do have the ability to start the rain event. Start a windy day. Start a sandstorm. You know, a little bit of Darude sandstorm. Gotta love that. Slime rain. The blood moon goblin army. And a lantern night. Say what? Makes every night a lantern night. And lantern nights, as far as I can remember, they give you increased luck. So those are the times in which you go fishing. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is actually going to wrap it up for today's episode. As much as we failed quite a lot against the Desert Scourge, we did come back. We took down the Goblin Army, which is interesting to say, considering we haven't even taken down the Eye of Cthulhu yet. That is indeed going to be our next boss. I think one of the things we should go ahead and try and do, though, is try to find ourselves the Goblin Tinkerer, okay? The sooner we do that... 
that, the sooner we can reforge our mini shark. Maybe get ourselves a slightly better reforge on it. And then, yeah, I've Cthulhu should be just putty in my hands. It should be easy. Easy street, my friends. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. If you guys have enjoyed today's episode, of course, you're excited to see more. Do be sure, of course, to head down below the video and drop a like. I very much appreciate it. Of course, if you're new around here and you don't want to miss out on my future content, do be sure to hit that subscribe button. But for now, my friends, thank you very much for watching. Do have yourselves a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you so much for all your support. I truly do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.